Dark Table 2.6 ships with a new module called Filmic in the Darkroom that you can use to control the exposure and the contrast of your image very well and manually in a short amount of time. Let me reset this picture here. I'm going to turn the base curve back on to go back to the starting result. What Darktable or an image editing program like that or raw development tool would give me out of the box. So the traditional workflow when you have a picture in Darktable 2.5 and before was to use that base curve and then to start to expose your picture to activate a few other modules, for example, the levels or the toned curve and to start tweaking the image. Now you can use the filmic module to find something similar to what you would get with the filmic curve in a video editing program. The workflow is a little different. The idea here is that it's an easy tool to manually expose your picture, to not use the base curve, but instead to control every bit of your image. You want to deactivate the base curve first and then to expose your picture so that it more or less uses the full dynamic range. So for that, you click and drag on the histogram slider. This is the easiest way to do it and you want your picture to use the full range. It might be a little flat at this point and this is where Filmic comes in. You will find it in the tone group category but I've uh, put it in my favorites here. If you go to the tone group and you right click on Filmic, you can add it to your favorites right there. If you don't have Filmic showing up in the list, you'll want to unfold the more modules panel at the bottom of the screen and to navigate down to the F and click on Filmic so that it appears in your available modules. I've favored it, so I'll go to my favorites, expand Filmic, and activate it. As soon as you activate it, you can see you gain a bit of contrast from the default parameters. But we can improve that quite a lot because the image isn't that great at this point. So we are going to use first the logarithmic shaper. You will use that to set the base value contrast of your image. You have the first three sliders that allow you to set a bit like the levels. You have the white relative exposure that's going, as you can see, to mostly move the highlights in your image, the lighter part, so you can compress or expand the range on the right side. Then you've got something similar for the blacks. You can set the blacks relative exposure of your image, so you can darken the black areas. And finally, you can shift the middle of your tonal range to the whites, to the highlights, or towards the blacks, towards the dark areas with the middle gray luminance. You will see that it also moves the following two sliders, and this is why it is the first slider here. At first, I recommend to tweak a bit the white and black relative exposure. They are called relative because they are relative to your middle gray luminance. But you'll want to play with this slider first and then to tweak the white and the black afterwards to get satisfying result. Don't bother too much with the histogram at this point. If it's getting a little out of the limits of the tonal range, if you are getting a bit of clipping, you can use the safety factor slider to compress the range back into something satisfying. There again, you can see the safety factor is going to move the white and black relative exposure as well and give you a little more space to then push the whites and the blacks once again. I'm going to reset the safety factor. You can right click and enter zero and enter, press enter uh, in dark table to control a value precisely. So you not only have, when you right click on a slider, you have that curve that allows you to control with fine precision in the center or at the place you clicked to fine tune the values, but you can also enter a numeric value 
any time, so zero in this case, in this box and press enter to change the value manually. So I'm going to tweak my image starting the middle gray luminance. I want a bit of darkness in the image. Then for the relative white exposure, I'm looking at the clouds right now because I want some white in the clouds, but I don't want them to be too overexposed, too blown out, something like that. And I'm going to open up the dark area. You can always add more contrast later. So you can see the curve preview at the top. This gives you an idea of how it's going to tone your picture. And you have the filmic S curve category that allows you to tweak the contrast further with the contrast slider. It's going to darken the darks and to open up the whites. You can use the safety factor before that to give you a little extra space to add contrast. Note that contrast is going to respect the whites, but it has a tendency to push the blacks a little bit. So you want to be wary of that and maybe reopen up my blacks before I use the contrast lighter. I also increase the lightness of the clouds and the bright areas in the picture and get something like that. Latitude is going to further scale the tonal range and in particular you can see on the histogram at the top how it tends to push the darks and you can see it on the curve by the way so it's going to move the dark point here to push that corner point closer to the darks darkening the image overall and adding some more contrast then you can use the balance shadow and highlights to compress or expand the tonal range once again further. Uh, it's a nice tool to reverse the S-curve and lower the contrast, or it, it's specifically targeted at the shadows and highlights. And then you have the ability to change the saturation of the image. By default, you can desaturate it by going down the slider, and the way it works is it will target certain colors only. It's not going to desaturate the image globally, it's based on how vivid the colors are, so it's going to preserve the more vibrant ones. And you can't push it past 100%. It's not going to do anything by default, unless you check the preserve the chrominance checkbox, and then you can push the saturation further. Note one thing, it's working particularly well on this image using the saturation slider with the chrominance option checked but in some images it will completely blow up the colors so instead you'll want to use modules from the color group to increase the vibrance of your image in this case when i go past 100 percent you can see it tends to increase the saturation of fairly desaturated colors the blues in particular in my image and i quite like the result actually then you have a drop down menu for the intent of your filmic curve. You can have contrasted by default, which will give you a contrasted result. You can soften the result with the faded option, which mm -hmm. tends to keep the shadows uh, fairly light. You can also use a linear intent. Once again, it gives you brighter shadows overall and the optimized one to be fair. I'm not sure what it does, but in this case, contrasted and in most cases, the default contrasted option is doing a pretty good job. So with the filmic module, we could take our image from a flat starting point to something that displays nicely on the screen. And I like to use it in combination with the shadow and highlight module from the basic group to then further target just the shadows or just the highlights. I'll use that often on the shadows only to open them up, but I'll use a large radius, for example, and I'll compress the range or open it up to increase the brightness of my shadows to lighten them up, but in a shallow fashion. This module is great. You can split it and have two copies of it. So set the highlights to zero, for example, and only brighten the shadows 
on one copy of the module and then duplicate the instance and use the second one to target the highlights only and to use different settings for the Gaussian blur and for the compression to ensure that this second copy of the module really brings details back into the sky in this example. You can then go back to the first module and further brighten the shadows to avoid that vignetting that you get on the screen, although it's a natural one in this case. And with that, we've taken our image from this flat and mushy starting point, this very blonde picture, to a contrasted image in little time and doing it fully manually. You can see if you want to use Filmic in your workflow. Obviously, you don't have to, but it's a great versatile module that you can use to really fine tune your pictures. I recommend that you try it out. And all the new features and amazing improvements that we got in Darktable 2.6. That said, if you have more tips for photo editing, please tell us in the comments. I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.